I'm delighted to welcome you all from 22 countries around the world. Today we want to examine how we can best support young people back into employment following COVID-19. COVID has really exposed some of the gaps within our systems and uh, we think it's the role of the government to fill in these, uh, these gaps. Yes, government has a role to play. Yes, private sector has a, a role to play. Yes, the parents and the civil society as well has a role to play. But a lot of the issues that, that we are dealing with now will affect our young population who we have to leave a future for. It's very expensive to be a poor young work seeker in today's world. And it's it's even harder now because of COVID, whether it's printing CVs, getting data to try and get onto a job platform. The youth, especially right now, are very innovative and some environments do not promote the ideas of young people. So we hope they can give young people the time, the space, and also the opportunities to be innovative and, prom uh, and promote a work-life balance being able to diversify and being able to put people on a pedestal almost um, to show you that you can really get to a place of success. When it comes to employment, um, the background of the youth, which includes your economic background, the caste and the religion you belong to, it really affects access and exposure to employment opportunities. In order for us to attract uh, sort of the best youth as well into business, we need to show them that, that there is a path for them, providing role models for them. Make sure the leadership team uh, in businesses represents the communities that we live in, represents the world so that you know, people looking at can say, yep, this person's leading a business. Maybe they didn't go to a traditional university. Maybe they didn't come down this route. Maybe they are of a different race. Maybe they are of a different caste. Maybe a uh, different religion, but they made it to the top. Youth from low economic backgrounds are unable to just break the chain and secure employment outside of what has been passed on to them from the previous generation. And um, this problem is just compounded by the narrow mindset of many employers who are very uncomfortable with extending, let's say, a job offer to a first generation graduate. Diverse groups make better decisions and therefore, again, going out and hiring young people from different with different backgrounds, different religions, leaves you with a group that uh, is able to make better decisions. There needs to be a mindset shift in our communities and, and many of us working in this space to say, how can we quickly, cheaply, efficiently pathway young people to work so that they can start earning quickly? So we really want everybody to involve the youth at every level of decision making, of policy making. We have involved young people in national decision making and we have started by putting them on some of the government committees and statutory boards to get their involvement in the running of the country. You know, rather than just lending to, you know, corporates, maybe we should be establishing, you know, entrepreneurship funds, entrepreneurship lending programs. I think the molds that we've all been taught to, to value, like CVs and grade point averages and maths marks, etc. They work for some jobs, but they don't work for everything. So I do think it's about actually figuring out what you're capable of and bringing that best self to the labor market and figuring out what opportunity in the labor market suits your best self. Attitude matters. Attitude that sees challenges into solution. Everything will not be provided by government. The attitude that I can do it Going an extra mile, active participation rather than being a spectator, all this can change the, uh, the young person into someone very responsible in the community. If we listen more to you from what they actually want, we can actually put in place some training programs to um, harness their potential, but also explore it a little bit more. It's really critical that young people's voices are brought to the fore by civil society because they have a lot to add and a lot of um, you know, value to bring to the table. Given the opportunity, young people have the energy and the creativity to solve many of the country's problems and to take it to a prosperous future. There is nothing that will be done for the youth without the youth.